Today I am going to show you how to draw this great horned owl in colored pencil. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. All of the supplies that I used for this project, including the colored pencil colors, are listed below in the video description. This summer I'm teaching a colored pencil workshop alongside artist Wendy Lane called Fur Feathers and Faces. This is a two-day workshop where your supplies are included and the first two days I will be showing you how to draw feathers and fur, the feathers from this great horned owl, and then the other two days are Wendy teaching where she is going to teach you how to draw realistic faces with colored pencil. If you want more info on that workshop, the link is below in the video description. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this video is available for you guys now, complete with voiceover, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now let's get on to this tutorial. I've started by filling in the entire iris with yellow and then I went over it with that pumpkin color and green for the shadows. I've filled the iris in with black, but I will go back in over that iris with magenta and blue so that it's not too flat. It makes it actually appear even darker if you add those colors on top of it. So I've continued to layer until I get my values where I want them on that eye. Blended that out with the Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner. As I move on to the feathers around the face, I have to make sure that I am really following my reference photo here. It's not that I have to have every line in the exact right place, it's that I've got to make sure that all of those lines are going in the right direction. That is so important. If you're just putting random lines all over the place, detail for the sake of detail, it is not going to look realistic. It is super important that you get all of these lines going in the right direction. For this section of the face, you can see I've filled in that orange color, just got a base down there. The same as with the black. I'm just getting a base here. I'm going to come back through and add a lot of details on top of that. Blended that out with the paint thinner. Once that dried, I can come back on top with more details. Again, all of these little details, they have to follow the direction that the feathers go on that reference photo. A lot of the feathers on the inside area or the area around the eye here are cross hatched where I'm going one direction and just crossing the other way. And it gives you that illusion of having teeny tiny little feathers in there. Blended that out with the paint thinner. And you can see with the paint thinner, when I use that on the fawn paper, it darkens it up a lot. As that dries, that whole area is gonna lighten right back up. Just continuously build more and more layers. You can see I'm using a fair amount of magenta over that orange color and the browns around the orange portion of the face. Lots of little wispy lines in there for those feathers. Now, as I get onto the rest of the feathers, the speckles that I'm working on, on the forehead, on the back of the neck, and on the back of the owl, you'll notice that there's just so much detail and it's going to feel really overwhelming. It doesn't need to be because it doesn't need to be perfect. The, if Most people are not going to look at your reference photo. You guys are gonna look at mine because you're gonna wanna draw this. But most people are not going to see that reference photo. They're not gonna see if you've got little speckles too far to the left, too far to the right. That part doesn't really matter. What you wanna focus on is making sure that the large big chunk areas are correct. So the black ring that I've got there, that needs to be in the right place. The eye, the beak, the feathers on the top of the head, the big feathers, I call them ear feathers, but I know that birds, their ears are nowhere near that. But those feathers all need to be in the right place. The outside line needs to be drawn correctly. But all of the little feathers inside the body, they can be slightly off and no one is going to know. So don't freak out if it's a little bit off. Now the clouds that are in the background, I did those last week. If you missed it, I'll have a link pop up so you can check that out. But I spent more than twice as long on those clouds as I did on this owl. The owl, as detailed as it looks, really quick to move through because you don't have to be exact. You just have to be close and your feathers have to go in the right direction. They have to be about the right size. That's the sort of thing that matters, but making sure every single one of these specs was in the exact right spot probably would have taken me four years. But in the end, it doesn't really look much different than what I have here where I just went for close. So you can see I've blended that first layer out with paint thinner. I let that dry and notice how light it gets. The paper gets so much lighter once the paint thinner dries on this foam paper. That's not something that I really experience on white paper. So you do wanna be aware of that. Now deciding whether or not I wanted to use the white luminance or the Derwent Drawing Chinese White, it depended on what I was doing. On areas that were super tiny, I would switch over to my luminance. If it was a larger area, then I used the Derwent Drawing Chinese White. 
Both are very opaque pencils. The Derwent Drawing Chinese White has a wider lead. It fills in a larger space. It's a much softer pencil. Both are quite opaque though. So I added another layer onto those speckles and then I'm letting that dry. While that dries, I'm working on the next area. You can see I'm just roughly blocking everything in here. I'm not worrying about tiny detail yet. And both the Derwent Drawing Chinese White and the Luminance show up really well against darker colors. So even though I've got grays on there, I can put the white on top of it and it really does show up. The only time that I ever used my Polychromos White, and I did use it some on this one, was to burnish other colors because not a whole lot of color comes out of it. So I can kind of lighten up the gray or the black areas just a touch without making it actually look white. So it's not a pencil that I use often, but every once in a while it is nice to burnish and just slightly lighten things up without making it too white like I would get with the Luminance or the Polychromos. You can see I'm adding a lot of blue over any area that I have black. I'm not leaving the black straight black. It'll come out looking too flat. If I add a little bit of blue, a little bit of magenta, it really makes a big difference in the depth in those colors. And the colors that I'm using for all of this will be listed below in the video description. And if you don't have the same colors, it really doesn't matter. You just need to go for close. It's all about your values. So I know a lot of you have Prismacolor, and so your colors are going to be listed differently. You can do the same thing. You just need something close. So you can see I've loosely blocked out where all of the little speckles are going to go, or the major speckles on the owl. Now I'm coming back through and cleaning things up and adding additional smaller little speckles in between. And this is another area. It does not have to be perfect, but you do want to go for close as far as what size each of these lines are, which direction that they're going, how long each of your pencil lines are. And I'm doing this very sketchy. I don't want perfectly straight, smooth lines or he'll come out looking like wax. I've got to be very loose, very sketchy. And I also need to make sure that a lot of these lines are overlapping each other in order to get that soft, feathery look. If the lines are too harsh, it's not going to look soft and he'll look very much like plastic. You can see I've shaded around the back of the neck so that that blends in nicely with the clouds in the background. It makes him look more like he's a part of the scene paper under my hand is glass scene. You see me use that a lot. It keeps me from smudging my work. And that is it for this guy. I do have an adult coloring page over on my website of this same image. So if you have friends who like to color, this is available to them. You can also use the outline for that coloring page to draw the outline for this if you are going to complete it as I have. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this video is available for you now, complete with voiceover. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, social media tips for artists, and our Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe. You don't miss out on anything so you don't miss out on anything. I can't talk. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my nose work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I don't know about you guys, but the holidays screwed up my schedule so bad. I swear, I don't know what day it is from day to day. I completely forgot to upload a video on last Thursday, two Thursdays ago, Christmas Eve. Yeah, I had one ready. I just forgot about it. Then I did the same thing on New Year's Eve, although I did re-upload it on Friday. But yeah, I'm hoping that now that the holidays are over, that I can get back to remembering what the heck I'm doing from day to day. I hope you guys had a great holiday. If you got fun art supplies for Christmas, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys got. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. You can follow... I have to stop constantly because I live right next to the airport and that's a loud plane going on right now. Like seriously, I'm pretty sure it's going to land in my apartment. Oh, and now the heater.